It's another crappy cold day in late November and it's raining outside and a little bit of slushy snow so I'm going to go back to our series that I was exploring last winter about how things work in cars or stuff like that. I, maybe it's you can call it a redneck genius series or something like that. Right Kitty. So today's lesson is on how ignition coils work, transformers work, magnetic induction works, magnetos work, electronic ignition works, and uh, points of condenser works. So sort of all packaged in one deal. So first of all I'm going to give you a pictorial diagram explaining the basics starting from Earth. So if Earth is that circle, well Earth has a north and south pole. There's where Lucan would be, of course. Don't forget Lucan. Well the Earth rotates. Well everything that's a magnet whether that be a permanent magnet or a magnet that's done by electricity has magnetic lines of flux that forms around it. These are invisible but they exist. It's like a force field around the magnet itself. Well say for example you are flying the space shuttle around the Earth through these lines of flux at whatever distance they are from the Earth and you are dragging a big long wire behind it. Well the magnetism moves the electrons in that wire and creates a very high voltage. So just a piece of wire being dragged through this invisible field produces thousands, even hundreds of thousands of volts. I guess that's scaring her away. So that's how that works and that's how transformers work. Well especially magnetos. The simplest form of this would be the toroid where you have a solid iron core in the middle like for example that rusty thing going through that ignition coil or that rusty part there that's made out of soft iron that can quickly demagnetize when de-energized and have almost no magnetism left in it that's the heart of all transformers and of course every type of transformer has a coil of wire could be one, two, or could be many well the toroid only has a single one so if you apply electricity to a toroid coil or transformer if you want to call it that immediately magnetic lines of flux start to form well they don't just suddenly pop there and become in existence they build from the center and go out to a certain distance depending on the voltage and the amperage with the strength of it it gives you the larger or smaller magnetic lines of flux well if you have a switch on that circuit where the power is going in and break the circuit and open it so it's no longer energized these lines of flux collapse back to nothingness again even though they're invisible and when that happens that happens at almost the speed of light and that collapse moves the electrons that are already in every conductor and pushes them out as voltage so in one moment voltage was going in and the next moment voltage was going out but like I said, when you applied voltage going in, these lines of flux just didn't become that size instantly. It took a certain amount of time, but when you shut them off, they collapse at almost the speed of light, almost instantly. So that creates like a super boost. It's called an eddy current. It causes much more voltage to come out of the coil of wire than you applied in. So say, for example, you put 12 volts in and you broke that circuit, you could get back 4 or 5, even 600 volts coming out and a spark would jump. Now I've made one tiny modification to that drawing I just showed you and this is going to cause the voltage to be much greater. Where that switch is, or you could call it a set of points, we add a capacitor. The capacitor isn't a very strong capacitor, it's called a non-electrolytic non capacitor. It means it doesn't have a plus or minus. It's measured in microfarads. When that switch opens and those magne magnetic lines of flux collapse and pushes out that much higher voltage, that voltage is usually so high that it wants to arc and jump across the gap of that switch and that depreciates the speed at which that, those lines of flux collapse and then you get a less voltage output. But, but by putting a capacitor across the switch, one that's not very strong, it absorbs that spark and causes an almost instantaneous collapse of lines of flux and you can get maximum voltage when you break the circuit and that's the theory behind a points ignition ignition system or capacitor discharge ignition or electronic ignition 
I'll explain that now. So this would be the simplest setup for an ignition system on a vehicle, for example. A battery, probably 12 volts, points, which is represented by a switch, a capacitor across where the points would be, an ignition switch to shut the whole system off when you shut your key off or it's not in use, your soft iron core, which would be there or there, for example, your primary winding, which has many less turns and thicker wire than the secondary winding where the high voltage comes out that goes to the spark plugs. This re represents ground or earth. So when the ignition switch is closed and the points are open, there's virtually no power energizing the primary side, so of course there's no lines of flux. Well, for a while, during the engine's rotation, the, the points will be closed. Of course, if the switch is on, then everything is energized. The big lines of flux start to form around here. And then someplace in the distributor, or the me mechanical mechanism that's in the engine that moves around, something hits these points, opens them up. Then, of course, a spark would want to jump across the gap of the switch, but the capacitor absorbs that. So what happens is the magnetic flux lines collapse, and when they collapse, they move, of course, electrons through here, which the capacitor absorbs, and they also move electrons through this much larger coil of thinner wire. And since we have many more coils there, we get a much higher voltage coming out. Like, for example, in a modern car, 30, 40,000 volts where the spark jumps that far. So there's a modern ignition coil. It happens to have two outputs from a V6 3.8. One fires a cylinder on the compression stroke where it's supposed to fire, and the other one actually <laughs> fires at the same time on one of the other cylinders while it's on the exhaust stroke, but that's redundant and meaningless, so nothing happens. But then when it fires again every single rotation of the engine, the other cylinder comes into compression and it fires at the correct time, and then that cylinder is on exhaust stroke, so it becomes redundant and you just have your positive and negative inputs. This coil is basically the same. You have positive, negative, and attack output too. And here's the Toyota distributor where the ignition coil or spark coil is built inside the distributor cap and there's your positive and negative terminals on each side. Well, lawnmowers and small engines and many off-road machines like dirt bikes don't even have a battery so they have to create electricity somehow because they do have spark just as much as a car with a battery. So what they have is a magnet on their flywheel someplace. It could be one magnet, two magnets, three magnets. For example, this one has one magnet. The rest is just dead weight. So when the flywheel is rotating, the magneto, which is basically an ignition coil, but a self-generating one, gets to the magnet, never actually touches it. It's bolted very close, so the magnetic field goes through the soft iron core and because it's a moving magnetic field it creates moving electrons in those coils which is generating electricity. So here's what's happening in the basic old-fashioned lawnmower which most engines used pre-1982. The part that goes to the spark plug, the secondary circuit, is exactly the same as what I've already explained. Primary circuit, at least on the coil, is exactly the, as I already explained. The only difference is there's no battery in the circuit. Because over here would be that flywheel rotating, every time that magnet goes by that soft iron core, creates, creates that magnetic field and lines of flux. When the lines of flux become at their exact maximum point, there's a bump either underneath the flywheel or on some part of the engine on a camshaft or something, which goes by and it hits another corresponding bump on the points and that pushes them open and of course there's a capacitor there to absorb that spark from the eddy currents like I mentioned and that causes the rapid collapse of the flux and that pushes a lot more voltage out like three or four hundred percent more voltage out than you would have if you didn't have a capacitor. The kill switch is just a wire to a switch that goes to ground which then defeats the fact these points are opening and closing and just would leave them closed. So that's how kill switches work on all engines and don't use a battery. On an electronic magneto, like the one I have here, 
it's easily identified by having that little piece of metal there that little extra piece there the old ones just have something here and nothing there that part there would be represented by this smaller coil and this smaller iron core that's the triggering coil that set of wires would actually be wrapped around that little tiny like nail shaped pin so again the wiring diagram is all the same on the high voltage output secondary side the kill switch part is the same the ground is the same the only difference is where the points of condenser would be there's a little transistor circuit in there now this transistor circuit could be very simple and always open and close exactly like a switch. Transistors work like switches but always open and close exactly when everything gets to the peak magnetism or magnetic flux. Well that's not always the best idea. Some engines like two strokes especially like chainsaws and weed eaters and that tend to want to rev really high when not under load. So there could be a system built in there to give it a little bit of electronic know-how like spark advance so as the revs increase there's a little brain in there that advances the spark which makes your engine have more power and at a better horse and at a better RPM range more torque and also make it more fuel efficient also in that little circuit can be designed the rev limiter so when it starts to rev to the point where it's at, at its maximum RPM then it retards the timing so it doesn't have advance and the engine starts to bog down and lose power now in any lawnmower engine or small engine if you can find an electronic magneto and it used to have points of condenser just cut all the wires going to the points of condenser install the electronic magneto if it fits in place and you've instantly converted it to electronic ignition no modifications necessary and there's your kill wire if you put a switch from there to ground that would shut it off and you can see right there two wires coming out of there that go to ground that would represent that wire and that wire and that little terminal represents that on a car system they have uh, multiple cylinders usually so as you can see as I'm rotating this thing this is part of the reluctor assembly this has four raised bumps and I can feel the magnetism and here is your soft iron, miniature soft iron core and a coil of wire that goes around it and the green and white wire are just the two outputs from the coil that goes around there like I showed right there and that triggering coil on the magneto so that little part is the same as that little system with that little coil and on the car this is the little computer that gives you your advance that changes depending on RPM and your rev limiter so the basic theory to the system is, for example, if your primary coil, when you broke the circuit and dampened its spark with a capacitor, produced 500 volts of eddy currents, then the secondary coil, if it was 10 times bigger or 10 times more windings, would produce 5,000 volts. But of course they have a higher ratio than that in coils. This is probably 100 times or 50 times more windings than the, just necessary to jump the spark plug gap under higher compressions. Keep watching, soon you'll all be redneck geniuses too. Sweet. Now I need a beer. Breakfast of kings. <laughs> Cheers.